और हमारी कोशिश रहेगी कि अरुणाचल के अंदर भी उसी प्रकार से डेवलपमेंट हो आपसे अपेक्षा कर रहे हैं वो बहुत सारे क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव जीरो फोर श्री डॉक्टर शशि थरूर जी क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव जीरो फोर यस मिस्टर मिनिस्टर अध्यक्ष महोदय विवरण सभा के पटल पर रख दिया गया है धन्यवाद मैडम स्पीकर the statement by the minister is very helpful uh, he mentioned 66580 papers in 2013 but what he omits there is that unfortunately that's only 3.5% india's share is only 3.5% of global research publications we have 17% of the world's brains madam given our population but only 3.5% of global research and the reason for this is that the number of researchers per 1 million people in india is as low as 164 now to give you a comparison china has 863 russia has 3117 per million and singapore has 6000 per million so clearly there is a challenge ahead for the government here i do want to stress man that a particular concern is that women women constitute only 14.27% of the total scientific research workforce in just 27000 science researchers are women in our country so my question to the honorable minister is can the government propose schemes to promote researchers and research publications using international collaboration where necessary in the field of science and technology and particularly for women researchers and scientists who are an untapped resource in our country madam speaker i am extremely grateful to honorable member shishi shri shashi tharoor ji for having asked this question because that has provided me with the opportunity to share with this august house some of the accomplishments and achievements of this department in the recent times his uh, figures are not to be disputed but uh, what i would like to bring to your kind notice is that in the number of the research publications going out from this country india today stands at number 7 whereas of till recently it was at number 13 and very soon we hope to become number 6 displacing france from number 6 so we are in fact progressing in that direction i am uh, i am glad and i am also have the pride to share with the house that in the last 7 8 weeks we have taken certain major initiatives and one of the most important of them soon after i took over this assignment was that we took the decision that here after and i think the honorable member will appreciate this that no foreign delegation for the scientific conferences will be headed by the minister or by me unless and until there is some absolute necessity to engage in some policy discussion and thereafter in the last 8 or 9 weeks all the major conferences abroad have been led by eminent scientists who had something original to present That's having said that sir i am sure the honorable member will also be satisfied to know that after having taken over another major decision that the department took boss and since he has an international expose he would be able to appreciate this better the prestigious carnegie conference which is the one of the most prestigious conferences in the field of science and has never been held in india so far in the last 66 years of independence is being hosted by us next year we have already proposed and the proposal accepted and also may i point out to you sir ma'am and share with this house that the first ever commonwealth conference in the field of science is going to be hosted by india we have already proposed in the month of november 14 uh, 2014 in addition on the 4th of this month the japanese minister for science and technology was here we proposed to him and he accepted that very soon we'll set up a biotech and life sciences center in india with japanese collaboration another new initiative just taken in the last two months as far as the foreign collaboration is concerned which was part of the honorable members question is that we have i thought as just as we have european economic union we would float an indo french scientific union so i have spoken to the french high commissioner he has given an encouraging response and with uh, with uk we had a program uh, the honorable members with his kind of exposure would well know have a newton program so we suggested to them i said we could have a collaboration but with one precondition which i am sure would be allowed by the honorable members i said this newton name may not go very well with all the sections of you know opinion in india so could we add newton bhava and i am glad to share with the members that now this will be known as newton bhava program you know considering the indian scientific connection as well 
So therefore, I would uh, like to share with this house that we are certainly progressing. We are encouraged. We have separate programs for women scientists, more so for the young scientists. In the last uh, month itself, we had a young scientist. No, no, you have not understood the uh, question. That is why you are saying no reply. The, the honourable member is satisfied. Please, please. please. Anyway, so we have we. Yes. I'm, I'm addressing this speech. So we have, we, we have, uh, we have, uh, we had an exchange program. Uh, I would like to share with the honourable member, Mr. Urji, and I'm sure he would appreciate, wherein we selected 18 school boys and girls from across the country who had done some original research, and we sent them abroad to share a few weeks uh, of their experience with the eminent scientists. So we are already in that direction, and the suggestions are welcome. Yes, second. Question. The response that I certainly am still awaiting more details on what the government proposes to do it to increase women researchers. But let me come to my second question. Yes. The fact is that we are only spending 0.8% of our GDP on scientific research, and as you know, in many developed countries, it's 2%. We have tried in the UPA government, it has been difficult, and we appreciate the challenge. But one of the important aspects, before the minister answers, the government doesn't have enough money to go beyond 0.88%. I looked at the OECD countries, Madam Speaker. The government spends only 15% of scientific research budget in that country on R&D. Private sector spends 75%. In India, the government spends 80%, the private sector only spends 12%. So what can the government do to encourage the private sector to spend more money on scientific research and development so that their resources can also contribute towards increasing the scientific output of this country? Very good, sir. Madam Speaker, the honorable member's suggestion is well taken. I think this is a matter of fact statement based on figures is hardly to dispute it. Somehow, incidentally, fortunately or unfortunately, the share of GDP allotted to this area is relatively lesser compared to the share provided to the other areas and also vis-a-vis -vis other countries. There is a need to increase this. We have also projected it and I'm sure in the years to come this would happen. And uh, as far as... Uh, the private party participation is concerned, certainly this is a very progressive suggestion. We are already working on it and we have, in fact, I would also just like to add now this since the issue has come up, we recently launched the first ever indigenously built research vessel from Goa, uh, which is called uh, Sindhu Sadhana. And this research vessel is already receiving private uh, offers for, you know, for utility. So that is one way of engaging ourselves. We have already, already received uh, a proposal from a private house for its utility for their uh, research inputs and R&D outputs. We are already heading towards that direction and the years to come and the months to come, I'm sure uh, the honorable member would see that we are working in the direction that he desires us to. Yes. Thank you. Sir.